Welcome to Second Empire Life. In this episode, we're going to look at what it took to turn a very tiny, unusable room for us into a turn-of-the-century bathroom. No, this isn't what the bathroom looked like whenever we got the house. This picture is from Mary Lou Amon, who owned the house in 1970. This is the room that we got. I wasn't quite sure what we could do with this. It was taller than it was wide, but still lovely. Most likely the room was a fainting room. If you aren't sure of what a fainting room is, it was a private room and its main piece of furniture was a fainting couch. This was used during the Victorian era to make women more comfortable during the home treatment of female hysteria. I'm not going to go into details on that. I'll let you Google it on your own. In this photo, my daughter Tyler is sitting on a fainting couch down in the parlor right before her senior prom. This fainting couch is an Eastlake style fainting couch and I purchased it at Robin's Nest Antiques in Lebanon. I purchased a lot of items for the house including the bathtub that we're going to see from Robin's Nest. This is the bathtub that I fell in love with. It looks like a normal clawfoot tub initially. However, it's the feet that make it special. After getting the tub back to the house, Frank began stripping it. He used a few chemicals um, and a lot of elbow grease. And then we had the tub restored. Then Frank coated the tub with black rust-oleum wrought iron paint. In the meantime, the contractors began pulling up the flooring, which we saved for use elsewhere. The floor was leveled and supports were put in where needed. And eventually, they closed off the doorway into the hall, leaving only one entrance. Our friend Winston, who is an amazing woodworker, began working on the bathroom vanity. This was going to be quite a unique piece. See if you're able to place exactly where these legs may have been in a previous life. Any ideas? That's right, they came from a grand piano. What a brilliant idea, correct? For those who don't know me, I make stained glass. And I had started work on a piece to go into one of the two windows in the bathroom. This would go on for several months before its completion. I decided to go with an owl match the feet in the tub. Inside the closet in the bathroom was a homeowner's greatest fear. We discovered mortar damage, specifically water damage to the mortar. We learned that this was due to failing tuck pointing and we searched to find the right person to fix this. We located T. 
Tacewin Sando, and he did the research and found period appropriate mortar, which would prevent the faces from popping off of the bricks. If you use modern mortar on a 200 year old brick, the face will pop off and the brick will disintegrate. Luckily, Tacewin took on the challenge, put up the scaffold, and succeeded. Six months after beginning the project, we had a room, an actual room with beautiful penny tile floors and marble walls. It was a huge relief. The lighting wasn't period, but it fit. And quite honestly, I love the way the chandelier looks on the ceiling. It's beautiful. Winston arrived with his masterpiece, my bathroom vanity with grand piano legs. It is perfect. I ordered the wallpaper for the bathroom from Aesthetic Interiors. They reproduce historic wallpapers. And this wallpaper was found in a home built around 1840, and it is period appropriate. It's an Anglo-Japanese style of wallpaper, and of course it has an owl, along with birds, fish, and plants in various geometric shapes. It is printed to order, and sometimes it takes a little bit to get it just right, but they make it right every time. The mirror I selected came from Robin's Nest Antiques. And it is a Victorian walnut mirror that originally came off of a dresser. It is exquisite. And quite honestly, when you look into it, you look about 10 years younger. You can't ask for more than that. Finally, after about 9 or 10 months of anticipation and angst, the bathroom was complete. The door that you see standing behind the bathtub is not affixed to the wall. We can remove it if ever needed. We found that in Louisiana and it was out of a church in Missouri. It just needed to be in the house. It added that little gothic touch. The feet of the tub we painted copper. It really makes them pop and stand out. Here's my friend Sandy helping me hold my stained glass owl in the window. Finally it is complete and quite honestly even today, February 14th, 2021, still is not hanging in the window. It will be. Trust me. I've begun decorating, adding an antique radio, adding some glass that my son Austin has blown for me. And instead of towel rack, I hung up these funky little owls and I hang my towel over them. We have another look at the wallpaper. And the project just feels good. I would like to thank you for taking the time to watch this little video about how I finally got to take a bath in my house. I am pumped. You all have a wonderful day. Thank you.